everybody. This is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and I have a really fun and yes, a beginner friendly project for you today. This is called the last minute ribbed scarf. This can be made in a weekend easily, maybe even in an afternoon, depending on the speed with which you crochet. Um, this is made of 100% single ply wool called spontaneous by Cascade Yarns. But if you are allergic to wool or you prefer to have an acrylic, it can also be worked up quite easily and just as well using the Bernat blanket yarn, which is 100% acrylic. You can customize this by making it longer than the specified number 90 chains. Um, in fact, I did that with this one. I made 100 chains and it gives a little more length. So if you want more length, you can definitely add that. Just by checking the chain, you can do a quick measurement to know how long your scarf is gonna be. And if you wanna make it longer, just add the number of stitches you prefer. And even though I recommend sticking with a, an even number for the stitch count, if, you, if it accidentally becomes an odd number, it's really not a problem. This project is very forgiving. And for those of you who are absolute beginners, you will learn how to make um, front and back post double crochets. And I think you're gonna find that these are your friends. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're gonna need. For this project, I'm going to be using two hanks of Cascade Yarns Spontaneous, which is a super bulky weight, 100% um, extra fine merino wool. And in this hank, each of these has 200 grams approximately 109 yards or 100 meters. So I'll be using um, a total of about 218 yards. Now, if you want to make this thicker, you can always add more and you can always substitute um, the Bernat blanket yarn should you wish. Your project will be a little bit bulkier with that weight yarn, but you're welcome to try that should you be allergic to wool or need an acrylic style yarn. Okay, I'm also going to be using a rather large crochet hook. This is my Susan Bates size P or 11 and a half millimeter. I'll give you a, a look at that hook. And as always, I'm recommending that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy to hide those loose ends. To begin, we're going to make our slip knot just like this. And then we're going to make a starting chain of 90 chains. After crocheting our chain of 90 chains, we are going to connect these to form a circle. And as we do this, I want you to hold this very carefully so that the chain does not get twisted. I'm going to just smooth this out and show you. You should see the the V on the front. So just keep that front side of the chain facing. If you can see it there. These do get twisted sometimes, so you do have to be careful. I'm just being very careful knowing that there are going to be some beginners trying this and I want to make it as clear as possible. And you can see how twisted this got on me here. I'm just making sure that it is absolutely straight and just by holding it like this and keeping my needle, my, my needle or hook. Yes, it is a synonym for the word hook for those of you who are new to crocheting. Um, so now we've, we have the front side of the chain all facing and I'm gonna just make a slip stitch just like this. Slip and bring the yarn over. Okay, slip, stitch. Now the chain is joined in a giant circle. So it's gonna, we're gonna chain two, one, two, and I'm going to do something a little different than what I usually do. Usually I say work in the side of the chain. And if you want to do that, that is absolutely fine. But since we're not going to be working over 
the end of this chain in any perimeter round is just going to be as we work it. I'm going to recommend that you work in the back bump. And that would be the little bump on the back side of the chain. So I'm going to work the first one. So you can see the front of the chain here and the back bump is right here. This does take a little more time, but I think it will result in a better finished look in the end. See, normally I will go over both ends with a perimeter round for blankets and so forth or sweaters, but this time I'm not. So I'm just going to work the double crochet, again, carefully working in that back bump. So go ahead and work this all the way around and I will show you the join at the end of this round. And let me also just give you a quick view. See how beautiful the bottom of this scarf is going to look, bottom or top, either way they will both look the same when you crochet in the back bump. That's why people like to do that. It is a little more time consuming as I said, but if it's going to be what's shown. It's a good idea. So go ahead and work that around. After crocheting all the way around, I want you to make sure that the that this row is not twisted in any way. You can just hold it out and and just make sure that it is, you know, all flat and not twisted. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet of the round, this chain two does not count as a stitch in our stitch count, so you should have 90 stitches. Now, if you want to make your scarf even longer, all you need to do is to add an even number of stitches. And quite honestly, even if this stitch count is off by one or two, it's not a deal breaker. This pattern is so flexible, um, you can really make it with any stitch count, but I'm just giving you the 90 stitch count for this particular one. Okay, so now we're going to chain two. Notice we did not turn. We're not going to turn at all in this pro project. And for those of you who have never worked a post stitch, um, this is even a great stitch for beginners to learn. I'm going to go very slow for a few times just to show you how easy this is. So we're going to just work double crochets. We wrap the hook, and instead of sticking it into the top of the loop, we're going to take our hook and it's going to go around the body of the stitch like this, like you're giving it a belt. And then you just wrap your hook and complete your double crochet as normal. That's a front post double crochet. Now the back post double crochet is similar and we're going to alternate between the two. You wrap the hook and instead of going in the front door, you're going to come in the back door and your hook is going to go around the body of the stitch and then you complete pull up a loop and complete that double crochet the way you normally would, but on the back side of the stitch. And we're going to alternate back and forth. So we do front post coming in the front side and complete that double crochet on the front side of the stitch. And for the back post, we come in the back door. It is a bit awkward with the large hook, but in time, your muscle memory will kick in even with a large hook. So we're going to do that again. Front post, double crochet. You see, I'm just making double crochets, but around the stitch and then come in the back door for the back post, double crochet. And so what does that do when you make those stitches? You end up with a rib or a ribbing. So go ahead and work that alternating front post, back post, front post, back post, all the way around and I'll show you the join at the end of the round. At the end of the round, you join with a slip stitch to that very first stitch of the round. And we're just going to repeat that round, which is round two. We're going to repeat it five more times until we have a total of seven rounds. And I'll just start you off. Again, you just chain two, and then we're going to work front post, double crochets, where you see front post, double crochets, and then we're going to work back post, double crochets, over 
the back post double crochets all the way around. So go ahead and complete five more rounds. This is what you should have after completing seven rounds. And I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. It's so soft and cushy. All right, so I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of this stitch. As we fasten off, I'm going to give it a chain and a tug, and I'm going to clip a generous strand and go ahead and give that a tug. And so now we are going to use our yarn needle, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to hide these strands. I'm just going to hide one for you. I'm going to go ahead and thread it into that yarn needle. Yes, that yarn, as thick as it is, will fit. And really, there isn't a front or a back side to hide this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just come on down into the stitches like this. And being that this is nice and fluffy and white, there should be no problem hiding this in the stitches. So let's go ahead and pull that through. Nice and soft. And you see how that little, that little um, fasten off stitch just disappears into the fluff here. Okay, I'm just going to run this down a little bit more. And then I'm going to run some of this up just because it'll have a little bit of pullback on it so it will lessen the chances of this ever coming out. Let's go ahead and pull that up. I think that's enough. I'm also going to pull back on it a little bit so it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to cut close, but not too close. I'm going to get all of it. There you go. And that strand is forever hidden. So all I got to do now is hide a couple of more loose ends and then I will show you what I have. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the last minute ribbed scarf with me today. I would love to hear from you. If you get a chance, please leave a comment below. And um, I just want to wish you all a wonderful holiday season and an absolute fantastic new year. God bless. Bye-bye.